Aries <laughs> and welcome to your October 2021 reading. I am Yola from Kitchen Witch in Tarot um, and I am going to pull some oracles and some tarot cards for you today to see what energies are about you for October 2021. Um, so the way I work is I pull a few oracle cards and a few tarot cards and we kind of look at what's kind of going on around you, within you um, at this time. And obviously Aries, you wonderful fiery creatures, you first signs of the zodiac, the great I am, you are dynamic and spontaneous and I have a very deep spot, soft spot for you all. Um, so the first card that I drew for you was Isis. Isis, the goddess Isis, is out for you, is looking out for you this um, this October. And she's all about past lives or past situations that may be affecting us in the present. Um, and in this time of Mercury retrograde, often a time to kind of reflect on where our life's been and where we're going. Um, it's often the time that people from our past return, exes return, um, so I would say she's a good goddess to call on when we're feeling like we might be a bit stuck, stuck in our present and affected by our past. So that's who, which goddess is looking out for you this month. I then call, pulled a Wiccan card, one of my favourites, and we got the commitment card, which is the ring. So I think what that's telling me is that your commitments in life are going to be uh, quite highlighted this month, whether that is romantic, uh, financial, work, children, um, whatever your commitments are, they're going to be quite highly highlighted for you. Um, and what I love about these cards is that you get a little kind of affirmation. So the affirmation for this is I am worthy of trust and your challenge and your question to yourself is are you honouring your promises? Are you? Are you honouring your commitments? Um, so yeah and moving over now to the little fairy oracle and we have quiet time. So this is really telling me that we've had Isis who's talking about past We've got these commitments going on. It's telling me that you really need to spend a bit of time alone, going inward through meditation, maybe walking or yoga or whatever it is that you do to take that quiet time. It might simply be just having a shower in the morning where you get a bit of peace and quiet from the children and family life. But it's really important that you recharge and spend a bit of time considering your commitments, considering those past influences that might be affecting you in the present. And it's funnily enough, we move into the Moonology Oracle and you get the North Node, which is about stepping out of your comfort zone. And I have to say, Aries as a sign isn't a sign that often spends a lot of time being quiet. You're quite a fiery fiery sign and a, a dynamic sign so you're often very out there and loud and big and beautiful and bold and this is telling you that maybe it's time to step out of that for a moment that's your comfort zone and actually to step into a quiet more introspective more reflective kind of time um, now my readings aren't specifically around love or business it's whatever comes up as I read but I have drawn a Romance Angels Oracle as well. And the, the card that comes up for your romance and your love life is codependency. So that's addictions are affecting your romantic life. Now, codependency is a difficult one. We all have things that we are dependent upon, whether they are relationships or substances or can even be exercise. <laughs> Um, so this is telling me that really, you know, you have this commitment card with uh, the ring here, is that really it is time to spend a bit of time reflecting on 
where you are dependent, where you are attached to, and if it is serving you anymore. You know, this past life, this sort of ISIS energy of looking and reflecting on the past and taking that quiet time and stepping out of that comfort zone and really starting to examine within yourself are the attachments and commitments in your life worthy of you, worthy of your time, worthy of your highest good and the people around you. So that's what that would be telling me. I then pulled some tarot cards for you. And the first card, which is kind of where you're sitting at the moment, is the Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords is a, is a card that's kind of a deceitful card. If you see the woman on the card, she's actually kind of shrouded in a cloak with her back to you, surrounded by swords, and there's the clouds coming across the moon. And this would tell me that maybe you're deceiving yourself around something. Um, or that you're being deceived about something. Um, and because what's crossing it, which is your challenge, is the prince, the queen, sorry, not the princess, the queen of wands, which is actually quite an Aryan card in itself, very fiery energy. There's a determination within you that might actually kind of make you feel a little bit stuck at times. Um, it's almost like you've got yourself into a pattern that you can't break free of. Um, and I would say that that is certainly something to do with your, um, with your kind of disappointments in love in an emotional way, um, that you feel maybe you keep repeating the same pattern, keep repeating the same cycle in love and emotions. And that could be romantic love, but that could be romantic. Uh, that could also be love for a child or family member or friend. Um, particularly with the codependency card that came up, it feels like you're quite stuck in that energy. And the energy that's ebbing away from you is the two of wands. Now, the two of wands is this kind of ideal of partnership almost in this context. Um, it's the idea rather than the actualization, I would say. Um, so where you feel a bit stuck and maybe self-deceiving in um, your love life, um, this is kind of saying you're kind of moving away from that. You're taking that time or take that time this month to kind of move away from the ideal and start to look at the reality of your situations. Um, and having this, you know, the, uh, moving into this feeling of the Five of Swords, and the Five of Swords can often feel like a bit of a defeat. It's kind of like, oh, I've been doing this, I keep doing the same thing over and over and over, and I can't do it anymore. And if you look at the card, you have this man sort of pinned to the ground <laughs> by these swords, but he's just like, I've, I give up, I give up. And actually, the surrender is what you really need to do this month. You need to surrender into this situation, allow the feelings that are coming up, take that quiet time, question where you're putting your commitments and your values, particularly around emotional issues. And then your final card is the hangman. And the hangman is a time of patience, it's a time of pause, it's a time of looking at things in a different way. So if you are one of those very dynamic Aryan creatures uh, that's always out there, always grafting, it may be time to just take a bit of that quiet time, take a pause, reassess. We're coming into the darker months now. These times are for us to kind of balance the light and the dark within us. It's a good time to reflect on the year gone by um, and sort of move forward through this energy don't deceive yourself anymore um, realize you are worthy of love look at where your commitments are look at where and who you're giving love to um, and work out whether or not this is something you want to do anymore well hopefully that was a bit helpful who knows you'll have to tell me down below 
And if you do like these readings and you would like a private reading, my email is in the description box below. I've also put uh, in all the card decks that I'm using, if you're interesting, if you're interested in any of the cards. Uh, I also run tarot workshops, goddess workshops and mindfulness workshops. Uh, I make beautiful kitchen remedies from my um, lovely kitchen here in Devon. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, please get in touch. And we're just going to finish your reading off now with an oracle card, a roomy oracle card which generally has a bit of a sacred honouring ritual with it. So, Rumi, what card have we got for Aries this month, October 2021? We have the Whirling Goddess. Look at her, isn't she beautiful? The artwork on these are amazing. So, Let's have a little read. Let's have a little read, see. <laughs> uh, so, the whirling goddess. Lose your head. Not a single thread that has a head can go through the eye of the needle. So this oracle brings you a special message. If there is an issue apparently unsolvable or unknowable in your life now, the divine is handling it. The divine is in the middle of it, working through the knot and unravelling it. Fear not. Let's do the sacred ritual together and give ourselves permission to take the night off from worry. I give you permission, Aries. You are allowed to not think about this stuff tonight. Um, so, if you now want to put your hand on your heart and just... Feel this beautiful, sacred, honouring prayer that will flow over you. I give my heart permission to lead this dance. I give my mind some time off. No more worry or doubt, planning or resisting. Instead, I surrender. Instead, I open. Instead, I allow. I allow. I allow. And all unfolds with perfection, divine timing, and the miracle of grace. With Rumi as my sole witness, and so be it. So now if you bring your hands to your heart in prayer, and bow your head to your heart, and remind your head that it has no dominion over your heart, that it is an equal entity within your life. Many blessings, Aries. Have a wonderful month. Thank you for tuning in. Big loves. Mwah.